Qualifying for the Brazilian Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen takes pole position for Sunday's Grand Prix. And today I'm going to be doing a data analysis from qualifying. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying at Interlagos was a session that was all about waiting for rain to arrive. And for some, that rain was due to arrive in Q1. However, the teams and drivers got through Q1 with nothing more than just a couple of spots. In Q2 it was more of the same, but by Q3 the rain was ready to pour. As you could see, images of very, very dark clouds hanging over the circuit. Usually in qualifying we see drivers go faster with each passing session, but this weekend when it came to Q3, the drivers could not match their times that they set in Q2, even though the first run there was not really much rain. The reason for this is not only was there some rain around, but the wind had really picked up, and the wind meant that the drivers were struggling for grip. You can see that when you look at the times of Max Verstappen, how in Q3, he was not there compared to Q2. Let's actually compare the times of Verstappen in Q2 to Q3, so we can see just how much Verstappen lost out in the final session. Even at the start of the lap, Verstappen in Q3 doesn't have quite the same run as in Q2, and you can see that because he cannot match the same top speed. That's mainly because he didn't get a good exit from Zhang Cao, like he might have done in Q2 when there was a little bit more grip. That being said, on the exit of the Curva del Sol into Turn 4, Verstappen actually picks up time in Q3 with a better exit. But from there, the Q2 lap times become faster. The rain starts to fall and you can see that he does not have the same amount of grip and traction at the infield section as he does in Q2. Then on the run into Zhongxiao, Verstappen has to break earlier and harder than he did in Q2 due to having less grip when running into this corner. Because of this, he did not get the same amount of grip on the exit, which meant that his run was compromised on the way to the line. And in the end, his Q3 lap was 6 tenths slower than in Q2. Qualifying in Brazil almost always throws up a challenge, as a change in weather is never too far away. This means that the teams and drivers have to be able to adapt to ever-changing conditions. The question is though, what teams got it right and what teams and drivers did not? Well, one team that didn't get it right and struggled a lot this weekend, especially after a brilliant race in Mexico, is Alpha Tauri, as both Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda were eliminated in Q1, which is very disappointing after what we saw just a week ago. But why is this the case? Well, to find out, I've brought up the times of Sonoda who is 16th to Gasly who is in 15th in Q1. Note there is less than a tenth between these two, but the way they go about the laps are very different. The Alpine is significantly faster in the corners, showing that they have very good grip and downforce for the infield section. Gasly and Sonoda attack those corners in different ways as well. Sonoda slows down more than Gasly, but gets good exits. However, Gasly being able to carry a little bit more speed wins out ultimately in the end. Going into Zhang Chao, Sonoda breaks a lot sooner than Gasly, but he does get a significantly better exit going up the hill. Going into the race, AlphaTauri may be struggling that they cannot quite carry as much speed at the infield section, but they could potentially make up for it early on by attacking going into some of those corners like they did in qualifying. One team that had a good day and almost made it into Q3 was Haas as Hulkenberg is in P11. So let's compare his time to Stroll who was in 10th place in Q2 to see where he lost out. Early on going through the center S's, Hulkenberg gets a brilliant run and carries that advantage almost halfway around the lap. Unfortunately though for him, when it gets to the tightest part of the infield section, we see something that we've not really seen a while from the Aston Martin, and that is that they can get great traction on the exit of the slow speed corners, and they use this to have the edge all the way up the hill. Even so, for Haas, this is a solid performance. However, it doesn't look likely that they will be able to keep it up in the race, due to tyre wear being very high, and Haas are still struggling for race pace. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would love it if you helped me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, and let's start with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, this is an incredible return for them, as Stroll is starting in 3rd place, and Alonso is starting in 4th place. But where did this come from? Well, really, it came down to them being on the track at the right time in Q3, 
as opposed to them being the fastest. But that being said, there was some real pace this weekend. Stroll was strong in Q1 and Alonso was very strong in Q2. Let's compare the times of Stroll to Verstappen in Q3, who of course is starting on pole position. In this lap, Verstappen has a massive edge in Sector 2. To me, this shows really where Aston Martin have lost out against Red Bull and the rest of the field. Early on in the year, Sector 2 would have been their strong point. However, it is their weakness now. Going into Turn 4, Stroll cannot quite carry anywhere near the same amount of speed as Verstappen. Then at the fast double right-hander, Verstappen carries a lot more speed due to the Red Bull having fantastic grip. Going into Zhang Chao, Stroll is on the brakes for a lot longer period of time, but he does get a solid exit. For Aston Martin, this was a very impressive qualifying session, though they are not looking likely to be very strong in the race, and instead it's looking more like they're going to be rear gunners to Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen in the early stages, holding up the faster cars that are behind them. That being said, it could be possible for one of them to score a top 5 finish from here if they perform the perfect race. For McLaren, qualifying today feels like one of those sessions where they really opted to throw it all away. In Q3, they did not leave immediately from the pit garages like the majority of the drivers, and because of this, they really lost out as the rain started to fall. Piastri lost the back end and he couldn't set a lap time, so he will be starting in P10. As for his teammate Lando Norris, he lost out due to the rain and set a time that was only good enough for P7. Here you can see just how a minute made all of the difference. In Q2, Norris was all over Verstappen's times, but here he cannot get close, and you can see him losing time at every twist and turn of the Interlagos circuit as he just does not have the grip. It is visible how much he was struggling, and he even had to lift on the run up the hill, as it looks like he was probably starting to lose the back end. For McLaren, this was a disaster, as they are in the perfect position to fight Red Bull. Now though, they are a long way out of position. For Ferrari, qualifying today was a mixed bag. On the one hand, Charles Leclerc is lining up in second place, but his teammate Carlos Sainz lost out big time and he is going to be starting the race down in 8th place, as he was another driver to get caught out by the tricky conditions and also yellow flags due to Piastri going off. Let's look at the times then of Leclerc and Verstappen to compare the two drivers. Much like a lot of the other laps that we have seen, Leclerc just does not manage to have the grip and confidence of Verstappen through the infield section during Q3 and it all starts at turn 4, as Leclerc just does not carry the same amount of speed as Verstappen. However, unlike a lot of the rest, Leclerc actually gets a very strong exit from Zhang Cao and all the way up the hill. In fact, he's actually faster than Red Bull up here, and that's probably down to how good the Ferrari is when it's at full power. In the race on Sunday, Ferrari are in a strong position with Charles Leclerc. The longer Aston Martin can hold up the Mercedes and McLarens, the more of a shot they have at getting a podium. The race pace though is not looking too strong at the moment when compared to Mercedes and McLaren, but with some well-timed pit stops, there is a chance Ferrari could get a podium with Leclerc. For Mercedes, qualifying for them was similar to McLaren. They were caught out by the rain and the changing conditions as Hamilton could not put a lap together in the final session, and really it all came undone in Sector 1 for him. By the end of the first sector, Hamilton is already four tenths down on Max Verstappen. And much like everyone else when it comes to the infield section, he just doesn't have the same levels of confidence. The Mercedes is also a draggy car this weekend, and you can see that, that they always lose time on the run up the hill. This is going to make things difficult for them when it comes to the race, because they now have to do some overtaking that they probably didn't anticipate, and they just don't have the straight line speed. Here they are slower than Red Bull, but that means that they're also slower than Ferrari. Aston Martin also has a slight edge over them. For them, they will be hoping that the downforce can help them to save the tyres in the race, and if that is the case, then they could be in a good position as tyre stints wear on. And finally for Red Bull, qualifying today was looking pretty tricky. They were not the fastest in the dry conditions. McLaren had the edge, and if they got the laps together, so could Mercedes have had an edge. They dodged a bullet today as Verstappen took an incredible pole position. His teammate Perez, though, will have it all to do, as he was unable to get a lap together before getting caught out by yellow flags with Piastri and the rain. And you can see that when you look at this time between Verstappen and Perez, he loses all of it at Zhang Chao. 
for Perez, he should be looking strong in the race. However, he needs to make sure that he can find his way through the field, as the Red Bull is a lot faster than Mercedes in a straight line. So he should find a way past, but he just needs to make sure he doesn't get involved in any silly incidents. For Max though, he is in prime position to take yet another win, especially as the Red Bull has the race pace edge over Ferrari, and Aston Martin will be playing rear gunner for him. So, what are my predictions for the race? Well, the top midfield driver I think will be Pierre Gasly in the Alpine, but what about the top five? Well, in P5 I think it'll be Sergio Perez, P4 will be Lando Norris, P3 will be Charles Leclerc, P2 will be Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen will win the Brazilian Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The questions are what do you guys think? In the comments down below let me know and as always comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.